And now, it's time for another Dice Tower Review with Tom Vassell. Over the years, I've started to play more and more what I would call light war games, introductory war games. Uh, Memoir 44, Led Me to Tired of Iron, and Commands and Colors, and just and, and Maneuver, and I've, and I've enjoyed them. I've never been a big fan of the overly complex games. Now, I heard that this game, Battle, the Napoleonic Wars, was a game along this same kind of feeling, a, a lighter war game. In fact, uh, I heard it was similar to Maneuver. It's based on an older game, Battle, uh, the Civil War. So I was very anxious to see it, and it's a hefty price, 60 bucks right now, and you certainly get a big box. But I have to say that when I opened the box, I was a little surprised that the components, they really weren't that great. They were okay. After playing the game, you can read whatever you want into this, that you know maybe I'm just not a, a great war gamer or anything, but this game... The main problem with it for me was that it felt incredibly abstract to the point where the battlefields were set up in this symmetrical way. And the game allows you to go a little bit farther, but there's no dice, there's, there's no randomness at all. It felt like I was moving chess pieces around and they slapped this Napoleonic theme on it. And I like abstract games that are very simple. This one I was constantly looking at charts to see how much my piece was worth when he was on a certain type of terrain. I felt like I was, it just didn't feel like a battle or like war at all. And therefore, I'm just not a big fan of this game. Here's the game board. Basically, it's made up of a gray frame. And then inside that, you put different uh, hexagons that are oriented in different ways. Uh, the, the book gives you several samples that you can set up on. And if you notice, there the samples in the book are exactly symmetrical. There's a river coming right down here, and there's a river coming right down here. There's a hill here, there's a hill here. There's forest here, there's forest there. So, I mean, each side has exactly the same uh, conditions. Now, the game does come with these sheets, and these sheets do show um, perhaps different... Uh, setups that you can do that are not symmetrical, that are different battles, and I again, these are something that I would much prefer to play over the symmetrical stuff, because while symmetrical is all fun for a game, it has nothing to do with uh, real life. I mean, how could you feel like you're recreating a battle when you each have the exact same things on both sides? Just go play paintball if that's what you're going to do. The pieces themselves, I like the pieces a lot, in the sense that they're round, and I've always enjoyed round counters. You put stickers on them. The thing I don't like about the pieces is I find them very difficult to tell apart. You can't use the pictures because uh, two pieces might have the exact same picture on them, uh, but at the same time, they, they each are delineated by two little letters, and they're in this feathery font, which I get confused. You then will compare these pictures to this chart and, and see what the unit is. Okay, this is Light Cavalry. This is their rating in clear terrain. And and this is their rating in the hill terrain. And this is their rating in the town uh, terrain. And this is how far they can move. And this is their point value for when you're building your own army using points. And this, I mean, it just almost starts seeming like a miniatures game. But the actual way the game is played is much different. Pieces can move across the board and you have a certain zone that you can set up in and your opponent sets up in a different zone and there's different armies with different colors for the different countries in this era um, and then each country is its own differential units each country has its own chart this is the uh, the Prussian chart that we're looking at right now you can flip it over and there's minor nations and then of course here's the chart that you'll use in most of the games and the French chart and it tells you different things but my problem with this is there's so many different pieces and they're so different in the terrains. And then even when they're in the terrain, if you can see here, when you look at this terrain, for example, when the old guard infantry is in a terrain, they have three different values in that terrain. And it depends whether they're being attacked or whether they're being attacked, including artillery. And again, I'm, I'm not complaining about the complexity of the game per se, but I'm complaining that the complexity doesn't seem to mean anything. Not only that, it's all about maneuvering the pieces. And again, maneuvering is important. I mentioned this when I reviewed the game Maneuver, that I liked how you maneuvered around to outflank other people, but here it's a done deal. If you have one guy against two guys who are coming after it, 
and both those guys have a combined better strength than your one guy, there's really not much you can do. You can hole up maybe in a town that gives you the best defensive bonus you have, but that's all you can do. You can't hope for this awesome role. You can't, there's no hope left. And to me, that's merely okay. Let me talk about some things I like. I do like the shifting terrain and how you can shift it around. I like the fact that there's a frame in the game. It keeps all the hexes from moving apart. The pieces are done nicely. The artwork is, is well done. Uh, a little bit more information on the piece on exactly what that piece, piece is so I don't have to compare it all the time. The charts are nice and they're big and I, I guess I can't complain about big charts but I might have preferred a bit more of a compact game. I need this big chart in front of me. Uh, my opponent needs one in front of him. Uh, the game comes with these shields which show you what all the units are and you also stick the shield on the game board while you're setting your pieces up and that's all well and good but again it's kind of like Stratego. How is this really a war game? Uh, you, even if you use the, the scenarios that come with it, it just seems like it falls short. Uh, they're very quick turns, uh, but sometimes you sit there and you really don't know how to move your pieces because it's almost as a, come and get me, I'm in a defensive position, why should I move out of it? So I look at this game and it looks like it's Stratego on a grander scale in a very interesting historical time frame, but I didn't feel that theme. I didn't feel like the French were much different than the British. I didn't feel that there was an actual real battle. Even when I played with the scenarios included in the game, and I'm really not seeing how this game is justifying its price. Yes, it's pretty. Uh, yes, the round components on the board, everything looks nice when we put it together. But what is this game giving me? If it's just an abstract strategy type game, can I buy one of those? Can I buy some newfangled chess variant that does the same thing? Uh, what are we doing here? And, and it's 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 hard to explain, but I guess I would say that it's too simple for its theme, but at the same time, it's too complex for what it is. Uh, it's not that it's a hard game to learn. In fact, it's pretty easy. The problem, you know, in your first game is you'll be doing this. Chart, 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 the whole game. But I mean, I guess after you play once, you know, so many times, you'll get to understand how the game works. I just didn't see, though, how it was fun. It didn't seem to bring its theme to life. And so for that, I'm going to have to give this one a thumbs down. Thanks for joining us today. For more written, audio, and video reviews, as well as the number one board game podcast, check out the website at www.thedicetower.com. Until then, this is Eric Summerer, and you've been watching The Dice Tower.